global crisis brings leaders to Pugwash. Center for Local Prosperity issues a call to action on climate change. Pugwash, Nova Scotia, September 30th, 2018. 61 years ago, at the height of the Cold War, Nova Scotia philanthropist and industrialist Cyrus Eaton brought 22 leading scientists from around the world to the Pugwash Thinkers Lodge to address the threat of nuclear war. Inspired by this historic meeting, a smaller but no less dedicated group of leaders met this weekend at the Lodge to address climate change. Today's existential threat, as calamitous as any asteroid strike, thermonuclear war, or plague, this weekend's meeting was initiated by Eaton's grandchildren, John and Kathy Eaton, and Nova Scotia's Center for Local Prosperity, led by Robert Cervelli and Gregory Hemming. In 1957, the scientists urged the world's government to act immediately on nuclear proliferation. They launched a worldwide movement and were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1995. The unusual team of warriors that met in 2018 first recognized that they were on unceded Mi'kmaq territory and that treaty rights are central to protecting the environment. Their final statement, the Pugwash Declaration, they identified a list of actions that every citizen, business, and government official in Atlantic Canada can take immediately to lessen the impacts and decrease the risks of subsequent harm from global warming. But more poignantly, each invitee provided an uncompromising assessment of the impacts of climate change. They all urge immediate action that is commensurate with the problem. It's a silent summer, says Phil Ferraro, organic farmer and co-director of the Institute for Bioregional Studies. After working in Cuba, I recognized the deafening silence in rural Prince Edward Island, not just because of the absence of people, but also of the decline in numbers of insects and songbirds. Our nuclear winter is here, and it is climate change, says Amy Larkin, the former vice chair of the World Economic Forum Global Agenda Council on Climate Change, and author of the book Environmental Debt. The world is on fire, and we are the firefighters. In Atlantic Canada, as around the world, we need to step up and care for ailing Mother Earth. Without a healthy planet, we all perish, says Robert Cervelli. Given that bleak reality, the meeting focused on positive action. We can eat our way out of climate change by turning away from industrial farming, says Lil McPherson, co-owner of the Wooden Monkey Restaurants in Halifax and Dartmouth. Jose and Peltier, whose social enterprise, Halifax, says we need to awaken the natural world so that we remember there is no separation between humans and nature. Municipal planners and rural communities in Atlantic Canada need to put climate change at the top of the list of their priorities, says Betsy Allward, member of the Center for Local Prosperity. And there is so much we can do to protect water, farmland, forests, and to create jobs for millennials. Climate change must be at the center of every single provincial and municipal policy, says Gregory Henning, municipal councillor in Annapolis Royal. All levels of government must work together and not against each other. We are all in this together. The Pugwash Declaration. The Thinkers Climate Change Conference agrees that all people have the right to live in a healthy environment, have access to clean air, water, nutritious food and green spaces, the right to know about pollutants and contaminants used and released in their local environment, and to participate in decision-making that will affect their environment. Communities should focus on local food and energy production for adaption and resilience in meeting basic needs. 
Further, the thinkers affirm that to face this ongoing climate crisis, all levels of go government must examine all environmental impact assessments through a climate change lens, accounting for greenhouse gas emissions, atmospheric temperatures, and sea level rise, changes in ocean currents, acidity, and overall ocean health, loss of biodiversity, and more extreme weather events. Take into account all environmental costs and consequences of policy and legislation. Address climate change in their budgets, including both mitigation of and adaption to the potential harm that global warming causes. The team calls for the following actions. What individuals in Atlantic Canada can do. One, conduct a home energy assessment. Two, look for ways to save energy. Three, know who grows their food. Learn and teach children to garden. Four, switch to renewable energy. Five, change transportation choices. Six, be mindful of what they purchase. Seven, spread the message about climate change whenever they can.